Let's take it to the bank. <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders walk into the bank to take on the Baltimore Ravens Sunday, 1 o'clock. Who gets their first win? Clock talks about it now. Nick, how you feeling? Well, I mean, as the Ravens, we haven't lost two straight games since 2022, and we haven't started 0-2 since 2015. So. Don't, let, don't, let the John Ball, don't let the John Harbaugh fanatics hear that stat. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> And that's something that's also going in our corner is uh, Baltimore has rushed for at least 100 yards in 34 straight games. And we're coming into a game in which J.K. Dobbins got loose for 135 on 10 carries and one leg last week against the Raiders. So we're set up in a good position to to win and win comfortably. I fear that this is a trap game only because uh, sometimes we tend to play down the competition uh, Garner Minshew came into M&T Bank last year and snuck snuck out a win, uh, a, a game in which we were up early. You know, we had control of, and then little by little, they chipped away until the end. They just gained momentum and, and stole the victory from us. So, you know, the, the Raiders, don't don't get it twisted. They have a talented team. Uh, Garner Minshew, uh, regardless of your opinion of him, he's had success on the NFL level. He can throw a football. Uh, and they have weapons, Devontae Adams, Brock Bowers, uh, Jacoby Myers. They have weapons over there that can that can make plays. Uh, you know, Max Crosby in the defensive line. They have, you know, have a stout D-line. Good thing is uh, two of their their other pass rush, rushers, Mike, Malcolm Kunse and, and Tyree Wilson, think they're going to be limited with injuries. Uh, you know, it's going to be important to see what Crosby, what we can do against Crosby on the right side, you know, with Macari and Rosengarten, seeing if we can kind of limit that that impact that he has. But we remember a few years, a couple years ago, the impact Max Crosby had against a young, inexperienced O line, and uh, you know we're going to have to see what we can do to slow him down. That's going to be a big, big uh, portion of the game plan. But I think it's going to be a heavy dose of Derrick Henry. Uh, you know, I think the game script is set up well for him to to get 20 plus carries and kind of salt clock away. Uh, you know, you want to see what this offensive line can do uh, with another week of seasoning, uh, you know, some home cooking, so to speak. See if they can bounce back, see if they have that in them. I'm not sure, but we'll we'll definitely answer, you know, some of those questions this week. And then, uh, you know, Roquan versus Brock Bowers. I think that's going to be an interesting thing to watch this week. Roquan wasn't the greatest in pass defense last week. Uh, and Brock Bowers, he was uh, the highest targeted receiver on the Raiders last week. And, you know, top 10 draft pick, you know, he comes with that pedigree. So it's going to be very important to see how we defend him in through the seam, as well as, you know, Devontae Adams versus the Brandon Stevens of the world. It's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see how we match up against some of their studs. But I expect a, I expect a, 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 a beat down for the Ravens. I picked the Ravens here comfortably, but I also believe that this is has all the makings of a trap game and we need to go into Sunday with hyper focus. Keys, what's your keys to the game? Hit me on a slant. Give me keys to an inside. But they took the keys. We don't have any keys. Now give me the keys. Oh. Um, yeah, just I mean, just to pick up, I think the most important matchup is going to be the offensive line. Um, we saw how bad we saw what Christian Jones did to them last week. Um, we don't want Max Crosby, he has that same type of game wrecking potential. Um you know, might not be as dominant, might not be as consistent, but if he get hot, he's going to get hot. Um, and if he's lined up against 77 all game, it's going to be a different story. Um, so I think, I think, I really think that's the most, you got to, the, the Ravens got to win the game um, with the offensive line. You know, we don't know. We don't know what, what we have. We don't know. I mean, we saw what we have last week, consistency. We don't know. We, we know where Ron, Stan, where Ron Stanley was. Um, we know what title Lindemann can be. Um, we know Makari is a joining man, but we we is a is really an unknown offensive line, um, below average offensive line, and it sucks. We talked about last week. It sucks to have that below average offensive line with a Maserati back there. Like you know, like you know, you, you, instead of parking them in a nice garage, you parking them in the shadow back. It's, it's not, it, it's not, um, it's not conducive for you know a, a good healthy season for Lamar. So I think that's the um, that's the most important matchup, um, and I think. 
we talked about it last week also the ravens got to generate more pressure they got to they got to get to the quarterback um you know the secondary is good the secondary is probably the strength for the team um but i i need to see old way finish in the backfield i need to see i need to see right i need to see ojabo keep getting pressure um i need to see what, what's going to happen with van noy access who's going to step up for van noy who's going to fill that void who's going to be there you know with with that. that that's a big question mark um because we saw we saw Harrison last week. Granted, Mahomes can make anybody look like that, but we saw Harrison last week. Um, you know, we we I, I need to see what's going to happen with that Van Noy. So is this going to just be a gaping hole that's going to be taken advantage of all game? Um, but like I said, not not losing, <laughs> not lo- not losing, <laughs> not losing two in a row. Um, the the hundred, you just got to go out there and beat them. You know, you like I said, I think we said this a lot last year. When the Ravens, you know, got you. So if you are the better team and you at home, you need to go show them. Um, build off of even though you lost the game against City, build off of that. Build off how you finish the game. Build off that ninety-yard drive to end the game. Even though you know one foot out, build off that. Keep building, keep building, keep. I think this season about like because it's not about the team last year. I think this even like I said, even with the L week one, I think this game in this season is about just keep building, keep stacking, keep stacking, keep stacking, and you'll get better. You know, you you have a very talented roster. Um, I think you're good at the mo- you know you you are elite at the at, at the position that you need to be elite at quarterback middle linebacker, um safety up the middle, um center you know defensive tackle up the middle you you're, you're solid. Um, I I just think that you know just keep building. Is a team that the spray about five and a half six and a half. Is a team that at home you should beat them by ten points. You should beat this team by ten points. Um, you know, just spread nine and a half. Not yet yeah, nine and a half. So it's a, it's a team that you you should you you may be able to cover the spread if you get off to a good start and you don't turn the ball over and you and you're not committing and Ronnie saying you're not committing hanging off the line penalties, um taking away big plays. So I'm just looking for to me, like I said, besides the the, the game in the trenches, I think this game comes down to the game trenches. Like Ravens got to win both sides of the ball in the trenches. Um, I'm just looking for consistency. Um, I I think I've said it before this season. I think the Ravens have a great team. You know they they they. They where they need to be. They just got to keep stacking. They need to get there. Um, and they start with games like this. You can't go in here and overlook this team and let it be a trap game and you find yourself trailing by three in the fourth quarter or up by one score in the fourth quarter. Um, you should have this game well put away in the fourth. No disrespect to the Raiders and Antonio Pierce, but they let J.K. look like J.K. And J.K. is not J.K. right now. So you see what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it, it, it's different. Like they went in there. <clears throat> the Chargers ain't really do nothing offensively and they let it be. I'm like, you can't let Gardner Minshew come in here and throw the, throw, throw the running ball for 250 yards and two touchdowns and, you know, take the crowd out the game. Um, I, 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 like I said, I, I still believe that the Ravens are one of the better teams here, and they just got to keep building, man. I'm, I'm just looking for the, 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 the stepping stones. Um, you can get up, but you can beat them 30 to three, but I'm still going to look for the things that I'm still going to look, are you winning your defensive matchups? Are you winning the offensive line matchups? I'm just looking for the entry because this is a game I think the Ravens should win. So I'm just looking at the more detailed game plan what's actually going on because you got the schedule is not easy it's not easy so you can't look you can't look past the Raiders look the next week but you got to do some things this game where you can build for next week because next week's game is not easy it's not it's nowhere you know is 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 there it's there it's, yeah. it's there so this game is there for the taking I feel like and they just need to go take advantage of it it's better start with coaching and we, we'll see if he got them prepared or not yeah, I mean, you talk about next week's game's not uh, easy. The next two weeks, Dallas and uh, Buffalo. Um, but for me, it's all about this offense, and I've talked about it through the preseason. Um, this mocking offense has to continue to evolve week by week. Uh, the Ravens were top three last week in successful play rate uh, with 52.7% successful play rate. Surprising given what the offense looked like, that offensive line, but that's a, a lot of that has to do with Lamar. Um, you're talking about a Raiders team that's coming in that held the charges to 83 yards in the first half last year, last week. Obviously, they let J.K. get going in the second half, but they come to play in the first half. Um, testament to Max Crosby, the addition of Christian Watkins. Um, they definitely have some dogs on that D-line that can play. So, again, you're looking at your O-line and saying, can you keep Lamar upright? Can you uh, can you make lanes for Derrick Henry in this run game? Um so that's the big matchup, that D-line first, our O-line, obviously. For me, it's just a get-right game for the Ravens. It's a chance to come out. Um, I really feel like it's a game we should dominate. Um, I looked at what the Chargers aren't – they don't compare to us, and that was a one-possession game until the fourth quarter last week, given it was week one. But I just know what we're capable of. It's a game where I expect us to come out and just dominate. Um, 
we've got to be better in the run game. We've got to be better in disguising things offensively. We can't show our hand with with uh, justice out there on the field that much. Mm-hmm. And just passing. Like we we've got to be better in that regard. Um, we've also got to learn. We got to be better stretching the field. I mean, I think Isaiah likely is one of our long ball targets with over 25 yards of tar- I mean 25 yards of catch. He's had at least a 25 yard catch, I'm sorry, in our last six games. Um we need wide receivers to do that too, to stretch the field. So that's on Bateman, that's on Zay. Um that's on this offense continue to stretch and ball week by week. But it's a game where I think we can go in and we should I think we win by two touchdowns, honestly. Well yeah. one thing I was um <clears throat> one thing I noticed last week is uh we talked about the average depth of target of Lamar Jackson last week in the first half. It was a little over one yard. So everything was thrown at the line of scrimmage, and that was just a signal that Monken and the team didn't trust the old line to pass protect. Uh, I think that's something that we need to monitor because we talk about getting vertical. You can't get vertical if you don't have time to throw. And if you want to do a quick passing game to throw off a pass rush, you can't get vertical. I think the only time likely got loose for something that was a 25-yard catch was on a broken play where Lamar had to be Superman. So we need that O-line to play better um, Mm -hmm. in all facets of the game. And this is a week in which you want to set the tone, but you also have to realize they're not a slouch. That defensive line over there isn't any slouches, and they they present their own issues. Uh, We're going to have to come prepared to play it. And I agree with Keys as far as, you know, the message this season is you have to just continue to get better and and slowly but surely uh, evolve as, as a unit. Uh, that's every unit, you know, secondary, linebackers, you know, D-line, the trenches, wide receivers, you know. Um, Third down efficiency, all everything. Everything, man, because this schedule isn't going to get any easier either. So we need to definitely use this game as a momentum builder and, and beat the hell out of them. Yeah. And, and and the Raiders last week, they held the, the Chargers with 0-7 on third down in the first half. They finished the game 4 for 15 on third down conversion. So. Another thing I'll be I, I mean, can, can, we, can we move the ball? Yeah, I mean, the, the, sustain. We take away the out, yeah, we take away the outcome of the, uh, you know, Ravens. I think Antonio Pierce lost that game for the Raiders. I don't necessarily. I mean, J, JK ran the ball, but he, I mean, I mean, take some Mike Tomlin words. He was, he was playing in his, own, he was, he was fear himself. Like he was playing in his own fears. Like, punt down the, his leg. yeah, punting the ball on, in, fourth, on and fourth and one. one with seven minutes left in yeah, no, in, in their territory is kind of crazy. Um, you know that yeah, that, that's kind of and that's the second time he did that. They punted when they should have kicked the field goal. They punted it. They punted it before. So it was like you know, yeah. I I I think the Raiders probably played well enough to win. Um, well, I take that back. Scott Minshew wasn't that good actually. Um, uh, you know they, but you know they they did enough to win. I think Antonio Pierce didn't deal in the face with, with his coaching decisions. Um, so yeah, they we is a team that yeah you are better and you're more talented than them, but. To both of y'all points, they not no, they not they not gonna lay down. They very very well coached. Um, they got some talent over there, so you gotta take them serious. But it's a team that should also, like y'all said, should beat each other up. You should, you are the better team. Yeah. All right, Keith. Let me know who's uh who's getting the helmet this week and who's on the sideline of street clothes. Well, I mean, obviously, Ravens fans have heard the news. Nate Wiggins is out this week. He was in a car accident. Um, I don't know what's up with the Ravens and driving right oh. now, but uh. Yeah, stay safe. We got to be better. I mean, you you got oh, you got you got give them some directions back on them back roads, Nick. Like they yeah, like that. Field ain't no joke. It's <laughs> it's like around here, Dolefield like, field oh. to catch you slipping. <laughs> it's tough. Man. Drive slow, homie. Drive slow. <laughs> that little curve, yeah. right? That, and they going on that curve. We all know that yeah, curve. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Curve. Wow. Hell yeah. <laughs> but Nate Wiggins out. Kyle Van Noy questionable now. Adisa Isaac is doubtful. Um, and for the Raiders, Debbie, without first round talent, defensive end Tyree Wilson, he sidelined with a knee injury, had three and a half sacks last year. And they've also ruled out their backup corner to Camry and Richardson with a hamstring injury. Is, um, did Van Noy so, practice this week? I don't believe so, no. Yeah, I th- but so we, we can confirm that, it's game but I, shit, I don't yeah. believe so. I'm a, I think I, I think I looked at it earlier. I don't think he did. My fault. I think I did look at it earlier. Um, I'm about to tell you right because, now. Because I mean, when we talked about it earlier this week, it sounded like he was going to be out for an extended period of time. He he was so he did not practice Wednesday and Thursday. He he was limited today. So yeah. he might, he may play. I mean, but knowing John Harbaugh track record, if you don't practice during the week, at least a full participant one day, you're not playing. 
You broke your eye, yo. Take a week off. <laughs> broke your eye, yo. yo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough, man. That's tough. All right, moving on. Can the Raiders run defense contain Mr. Derrick Henry, Nomi Porta, and brother Lamar Jackson? I mean, we saw what JK did last week on 10, 10 rushing attempts, 135 yards. Is That's not crazy. good defense up front. That's crazy. <laughs> it's not good defense up front, to say the least. They shut us um, leverage down last week, but they can't do nothing with JK. I mean, but I mean, to your point, I, who has a shot Gus I was down over the last three years? So I was like, you know, he wasn't on the one yard line. Yeah, um, but I mean, the, the short answer to that is is no, they can't. They they better not. I expect I I do respect Lamar to go over hundred yards again. Um, I, I do respect that. I said Dark Henry to have a better game, but I don't like the the talk of. I mean, yeah, get him more involved. Definitely get Dark Henry more involved. He should have definitely more than thirteen carries, but I don't need to see him with 30, 35 carries. That's not what I want to see, because I, I I just I don't want them to force it, and then now to key point becoming predictable, like you know keep get them as carries within the game plan. If you're a good coach, if you're a good football coordinator, you can do that. You can get the you can get your running back his carries within the flow of the game. It should not we should not be having to feel like that Curry is getting force fed, and now everything the flow is thrown off. Now Lamar is out of rhythm. Get him as carries within the game. There's a lot of there's a lot of times when they could have ran them against the Chiefs, but they didn't, and it was in the flow of the game. Um, so just get just get him as carries in the Florida game, man. Don't be forcing it, just forcing it, forcing it, just so we can look at the box side of the game and say, oh, we had 22 carries. You know, that uh, I'm good. If it's 22 efficient carries where it's in the Florida game, cool, but not 22 where we just sit in the back handing the ball just to give it to him when it's not even a running situation. Yeah, I mean, we should not have any problems running the ball. Uh, you'd kind of want to see this week not be a Lamar week. This should be the week that uh, – Lamar can save some hits on his body and Derrick Henry can take the load pause and, um, you know, be the person that that is being the bell cow back there, so to speak. I don't really want to see Lamar with over 15 rushing attempts, you know, anywhere in that five to eight range this week should suffice. I would think anything more than that just tells me that it was more of a struggle than it needed to be. Um, also want to see how the run game is deployed. You know, is Lamar going to just be taking these snaps under center? Um, are we going to start doing some more pistol? Are we going to start doing some RPO in the spread? How exactly are we going to start uh, mixing and matching this Lamar Derrick Henry partnership? Uh, we talked about it last week. It was more so making Derrick Henry comfortable last week with the game plan and how he was utilized. I'd like to see more of a merger and more of a split marriage in that regard. So, yeah, we can do some things that Derrick Henry likes to do, but the things that Derrick Henry likes to do are things Lamar Jackson hasn't really been doing his entire career. Not saying that he can't do it. It's just things that he hasn't been doing and vice versa. You know, uh, the way Lamar has uh, been used in the run game and running backs with Lamar have been used in the run game is a lot different than how Derrick Henry has been utilized. So if they can just work on that merger and start to, 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 uh, kind of be more balanced in that regard as far as that's concerned we're a much more dangerous team it, to, to at least to answer the question though what the hell were they doing in, uh, in the whole offseason the training camp if, if we got to do it in season like what the hell were y'all doing you know what, what type of coaching was being done this is this is the <laughs> thing you would you would hope monk and same coach that came out and had six penalties can line up <laughs> <laughs> jesus like and that's another reason i don't trust um the play calling or just like in general just like Right now, per se, I don't know where where we need to be to be that aggressive of a team against the best teams. But at the same token, we should be at that point. You know, year two of a system, everybody should be more comfortable. Uh, it, it 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 doesn't require much imagination to to figure out how you can best utilize Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson together. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that maybe it's week one we're not trying to expose too much or is week one we still want to have a basic game plan and we'll build from here. I'm hoping week two we see some more some more uh, flashes of what this can be. Yeah, I agree. Just dominate. I mean, we rushed for 100 yards in 34 straight games. Make it 35. Y'all got it. Saw an interesting quote from y'all favorite wide receiver you want to hear. Randy Moss? No, no, no. no. Okay. Try, try again. Try again. Keys, who's your favorite wide receiver? 
Uh, I, I can't say it on this show, but no, no, Nick. I, I can't. I mean, I you. I mean, I think we can use our cards as clues, but we, the okay. diva. That's what I said. Like, I think, I think, I think we got no, the same diva, thing. diva for sure. You're getting hotter. You're getting hotter. He's probably in the somewhere getting his nails painted uh, right now. Rashad Bateman says, I haven't played with him a lot because of my injury. So I'm learning now more about him. And he's learning more about me, about what I'll do on certain stuff. And I know what to expect him to do on certain stuff. Bateman said, um, the person who tweeted this, also he came to the conclusion that he's talking about Bateman being more of a timing route runner. That's what he's used to in Minnesota. Opposed what? to Lamar, who can get out the pocket play street football and uh improvise to make plays down the field mind what, you we're talking about happened? year four what happened to the days of, of, ju of just adjusting though like nobody wants to adjust nobody can adapt everybody's just stuck in their ways everybody can't just if you if if, if you wake up and the thing is supposed to be a certain way and you're not then you're holding you're having a whole goddamn bad day like what happened to yeah. just adjusting like and just going like this adjust <laughs> like, yeah. like adjust like yeah. i mean like we talk about four years later yeah. you talk about i'm used to this i'm used to that like it, it's it's bad. It, you don't want to hear that from your, your number two. You you don't want to hear that that you're not. He basically told us, "I have I have I've have I've never been, and I'm still not on the same page with my quarterback." That's basically what he's saying. Um, and he's you know, and he's trying to blame it on injuries and what he's used to, and instead of just getting better, that's what it sounds like to me. He just he just doesn't want to be better. Um, you know, so if I, if Zay Flowers can come in and figure it out. Then I feel like he should have, he should, he because Zay, Zay came in and he, automatically he, he he developed a rapport with Lamar where he's getting open on broken plays. What are you doing, Bateman? You can't keep blaming injuries. Um, I'm just sick of Bateman, man. I, I, I'm sick, of, I'm sick, of, I'm, I'm sick of it. I, I, I really am. Like, it, you pay him for what for a reason. I don't know why. Um, even though it was a lot of money, I don't know why. But what has he done to, to get a contract besides get hurt? Like, I'm, I'm sure it's a hefty injury clause in that contract. It has to be. You know, like it, it, he just—he's a bum. That's uh, that, that's 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 He's a bum. He hasn't proven that he's anything but a bum so far. An injured bum. Um, I, those comments are concerning because it's just a a laundry list of excuses. Like before, it was injuries, and now it's chemistry. Um, you know, people talked about in the summer, like when he said that he wasn't going down to South Florida to work out with Lamar. The question is why, like what have you done for you to not make that trip? Um, why does it have to be that difficult to get you in South Florida? It's South Florida. You ain't got to tell me twice. Um, and again, if it's, if it's a work trip to get on the same accord as my quarterback, my issue with that quote is uh, I said this earlier, but it's kind of like, he's the tool of wide receivers. Like Tua, if you knock him off his spot, he, he looks very robotic. And that is not how you play football. That's not how you play sports. Everything should be read and react. It shouldn't be, you know, I'm literally going, like, you can see me thinking as I'm going through these progressions. Like, bro, you're supposed to just see the field and act. Yep. And the best wide receivers over the course of NFL history have had that, uh, that telepathic connection with their quarterback. Um Look at the Julian Edelmans of the world with Tom Brady. Look at the Marvin Harrisons of the world with, with Peyton Manning. Like, they are moving as one on the field. So look at Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. You think you, when you hear, when you watch these broadcasts and you hear about Travis Kelsey stopping the play call mid-route and then doing what he wants to do in freelancing and Patrick Mahomes reading his mind at the same time, that's why they're so difficult to defend. That's why they've won three championships over these past several years. It's because – they're over here playing backyard football, but they're doing it on some high IQ shit. Mm -hmm. Bateman, I don't want to hear about your precision route runner, brother. I want to hear that you have a connection with your quarterback. And if you aren't on the field as much as you want to be because of injuries, then your ass should be out there in the summertime in South Florida working out with him instead of painting your nails and wearing Balenciaga. Like we gotta, we gotta understand and realize how how that type of stuff looks in 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 the in the optics game. The you over here, things, man. you over here in fashion week, looking like a fashionista, but you don't want to <laughs> put in the time for your quarterback, Speak and then you it. make excuses about it. Speak on it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't get that guy, but um, 
again, the best wide receivers, you've never heard them say, oh, I'm a precision route runner. I don't know how to think with my quarterback. You know, I've never heard that shit before. So this is perplexing to me. Like to, to answer your to answer your question, so I can't say he's my favorite because he's a Steeler, but the best person I've seen play wide receiver is Antonio. There you go. There you go. Like, I mean, come on, like that, that's that's the person I've seen play wide receiver the best, and he's the, he's mean, the improv, imp, improvision king. Like, <laughs> yeah, because even even if you out playing football on Thanksgiving with the with, with, with the fellas, if you run a route and you see your quarterback start scrambling, yeah, you move, you move. When I move, you move just like that. Ludicrous mm-hmm. said that. Just like that? Just like that. Yeah. You just my, don't my stand old... still. Like, oh, shit, he's scrambling. I ran my route, though. I'm going to check. Let me run into two that? defenders. Yeah, <laughs> That's crazy. Sure. Let me run into a double team. I mean, my whole thing is how many times have you seen partnerships they built in the offseason? Do you build chemistry yeah. throughout the season? Sure, but the chemistry is built in the offseason. What the hell is Spending a precision time route together, too? I'm in the action. Watching film together, like, yeah, it's just. Devontae Adams? Like, yeah. What are we talking about? I never heard him say something like that because guys. And like, hey, he brought in Devontae to that connection list too. The hey, yeah. him, him and Aaron Rodgers. Come on, hey, you don't think A Rod? A Rod is the king of improv. Improv. improv I'm sorry. Like, come on, man. The, yeah, I've never heard time and routes and yeah. It's, it's college. It, it's that's, it, it only it it's literally, only, it literally only happens in college. It literally, it literally only happens where you run into a spot and get the ball in college. Like that's the only place it happens. Is that college. sounds like my glory years was in college, and I'm thinking mm-hmm. the pros are supposed to be college, and no, it's a higher. It's a higher IQ brand of yeah. football. You're gonna to have to think the game, not just run a route. And and again, the, to your point, what is a precision route runner? Because there's a lot of people that can run a, a nice route. There's there's people on TikTok that that have route running videos. You know what yeah. I mean? But they're not NFL athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, destroying can and, run routes. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm not a I'm not a Raven fan, but just a fan of football. Some of my favorite players ever wide receivers. I, I don't want to hear my wide receiver talking about Minnesota. That's where he went to college four years later. After your rookie right. year, it's, you talk about the speed of the game, cool. Four years later, you talking about what I'm used to at Minnesota? Come on, yo. Come on. Living that's in a glory days. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, literally, it's literally grounds for a breakup. If you if you talking about what you're used to, then go back to what you used to. You don't need you don't need it's, it's grounds for a breakup. Seriously. Like, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yeah, I got <laughs> so I'm a guess that Rashad Bateman is not going to be a player to watch for this week. I mean, he he got to be on the radar after comments like this. I think I think this is, I mean he's just a, a every week player to watch for because he's a bomb. So we wanted to see him do something. So it's like, yeah, but I, I'm not going to put him on no special pedestal. Just just play better, bomb. Like just be better and stay. Now, to your point, every week, Nick. Why are we talking so much? Why is it a quote about the Ravens every single week? I'm not used to this. Like, I'm not used to this locker room chatter every single week. Here, here listen, we need to beat these, we need to beat the Raiders and beat them soundly because anything close is gonna be a, a panic. A I mean, panic. especially when you're going when you got Mike, when you come to Mike and Parsons next week. I mean, it's it, 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 like On the it's road. different. Like it's different. And then the bills to follow that, you know, our schedule is not the easiest. Um we're gonna to have to stack these wins, and we can't we can't be playing around with our focus, man. Like it's it's go time now. But I mean, we look we look really good week one. You know, for all our complaints and criticisms, we played the Chiefs really well. So this should be something where we we cover the spread. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, one player to watch for before we go on the break. I'm gonna say Oway. I, I'm gonna say oh way and this and then, and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm leave it there. I'll we'll talk, I'll recap. <laughs> I'll recap. Need these. <laughs> right. I'll we'll recap. Need, we'll need, <laughs> I'll recap forward. about oh way. I'm not even gonna give a whole spill on oh way. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just put his name out there and I will talk. Uh, okay. I'll talk more about him. Uh, there you go. M- Minshew was sacked four times last week, so I'm gonna go with Matabuke and you know see if he can. He had a half sack last week. See if he can continue his Aaron Donald. Traject- trajectory and see if uh, we can we can get some pressure on Gardner. Yeah, I'll go um I'll go offense. I'm looking to see how this uh what Mark Andrews does. We talked about it a little bit earlier this week. Mark for Zay, Isaiah likely. Um is the pressure getting to Mark this week? Is he starting to feel the fire a little bit? Um 
maybe he need to get his legs back, play some games. So we'll see what he looks like this week in the game. But he he should have some favorable matchups in the passing game. Um, see if he can get right. His usage last week was uh, promising. You know, he was running the routes. He was on the yeah. field. So he should he should bounce back, but definitely going to be somebody to watch because I don't think that Isaiah and Lamar thing is going in, going anywhere anytime soon. No way soon, no. I took him off the bench of fantasy, so I hope not. Let's go, Isaiah. <laughs> Need that. Let's go to the first commercial break, Nitty Gritty. When I want some sports news, Nitty Gritty is definitely who I'm tuning into, man. They show up each week. With that uncut, that raw, that unfiltered sports news. They say the things that everyone else wishes that they can say, but they can't. Every Tuesday and Saturday, I am locked into my favorite sports show, Nitty Gritty. Nitty Gritty, the best show out right now. Tune in and listen, stupid. 